This is the world's tallest full-scale building ever to be constructed and tested on an earthquake simulator also known as a shake table, and it uses new building technology that's supposed to make it nearly earthquake proof. But it's never been tested to this scale before. So structural engineers and researchers are going to test this mass timber skyscraper against some of the most destructive earthquakes in recent history. With the help, of course, of the world's largest shake table located in the University of California, San Diego, to see if it survives. I'm Matt Picardle, and I'm a licensed structural engineer in California. And if you don't know, structural engineers are the ones that designed the building skeletal system so they stand up and don't fall down during earthquakes. See this? This is all of the structural skeleton. Floors, the walls, the beams, the columns, all structural elements. It's beautiful. And a special thanks to Dr. Sheeling Pei for giving me a tour of this project. Let's get started. This test is part of the Neary Tall Wood Project, a research project supported by the National Science Foundation, and it aims to develop earthquake resilient tall wood building designs. And that huge shake table that it sits on, it's basically a huge steel block foundation driven by hydraulic pistons that are controlled using computers. So the table reproduces earthquakes by inputting in previous earthquake ground motion records. So for example, the researchers are going to be inputting the magnitude 7.7 .7 Chi Chi Taiwan earthquake, one of the deadliest earthquakes in recent history that had a death toll of over 2000 people and destroyed over 10,000 buildings. Structural engineers and researchers working on this want to find out how tall wood skyscrapers perform in large earthquakes, mainly because mass timber is gaining popularity as a sustainable building material, since it has less CO2 emissions than steel and concrete. Mass timber is also stronger and more stable than the traditional light frame wood construction, allowing it to go 10 or more stories tall, making wood skyscrapers possible. The secret to mass timber strength is that it uses multiple wood panels nailed or glued together, making them stronger, more stable and more massive than the typical light frame construction. And we don't really know how well these mass timber buildings perform in earthquakes since it's a relatively new construction material. So if the earthquake testing goes well, you might be seeing more mass timber buildings being built. But the stars of the show are the mass timber rocking walls. These rocking walls act as the spine of the structure. They prevent the building from toppling over if heavy winds or earthquakes hit it. There are two things that make this rocking wall system unique and special. First, wooden skyscrapers don't often use mass timber as the spine or the lateral resisting system because they're usually not strong enough to resist heavy winds or earthquakes, especially for tall buildings. You'll often see concrete walls or steel braces forming the spine of the structure since they're stronger and stiffer than wood. And second, it's not only supposed to survive earthquakes, it's supposed to be resilient against them. Resilient meaning it's going to have little to zero damage after a big earthquake hits it, making these walls nearly earthquake proof. So why do these mass timber rocking walls have the audacity to think it can survive earthquakes almost unscathed? when it's not as strong and it's less stiff than concrete or steel. Well, structural engineers might have figured it out. Instead of taking the conventional brute force method approach of making the structural spine super strong and super stiff to fight the earthquake, rawr, more concrete, more steel. Structural engineers went in the opposite direction. Instead of fighting the earthquake, the building will go with the earthquake. It will lean with the earthquake. It will rock with the earthquake, similar to a rocking chair, hence the name rocking wall. So how did they apply and engineer this to an actual building? Well, they basically used solid wood mass timber panels, anchored them to the ground using steel cables, and then stretched the cables so that they're always pulling and in tension. I know that's a lot of words, so here's a simple demonstration. Imagine the rocking wall system or the building is this cup. This piece of wood is the foundation of the building, and the steel cables are represented by these rubber bands. The steel cables go through the rocking walls and then through the foundation. Then they are stretched and then clamped on each end. That stretching part is really important because now the building is being pulled towards the ground at all times. So when an earthquake hits and tries to tip the building over, the building rocks back and forth, sometimes even lifting off the ground. But since the cables were stretched out beforehand, they provide the restoring force to snap the building back in place, back to its original position. Undamaged, resilient. But what's the problem with the conventional methods of using steel braces or concrete walls that 
we do on most buildings nowadays. Well, most of the time, they're not very resilient, even though they are strong. They won't collapse or fall down during an earthquake. Here's what I mean. Imagine this cup is the steel slash concrete wall building. It's strong and stiff, so we're gonna glue it to the foundation for a strong and stiff connection. And here's the earthquake force trying to tip the building over. And great, the building's strong and stiff enough to resist the earthquake. It survived, it did its job, but it's damaged. It's even permanently tilted a bit. But according to the current building codes, this is acceptable. It didn't collapse so people can evacuate. Mission accomplished. But it's damaged. If you're the building owner or if that was your home, you wouldn't be too happy because you have to shut down the building after the earthquake. You have to pay for the expensive repairs. And you can't go back into the building for weeks or months until it's repaired. Or worst case, it's so badly damaged after the earthquake that you have to tear it down and build a completely new building. In other words, not resilient. That's why structural engineers are coming up with these new resilient building systems and engineering techniques. But that's enough theory. Will it actually work against a real earthquake? But first, how did previous buildings perform during their earthquake tests? Just so we have something to compare it to. Note that the following earthquakes aren't the exact same as the Chi Chi earthquake, but they're all pretty powerful. This one's light frame timber construction and it's on its last legs and they were just trying to make it fall down. This one's metal studs. And there goes its spine. And this one's a 7.9 earthquake in a concrete building. And look at the concrete column on the bottom right. You can see all the cracks opening and closing. And this one's the beam. You can see the concrete beam here spalling out and just vomiting concrete. Now that you got an idea of what the shake table can do, let's get back to the mass timber test. Let's put it to the test with the magnitude 7.7 .7 Chi Chi earthquake. What we can tell so far is that building meet its uh, design expectations that there's no damage, there's no residual drift. And look, it works. There's no visible damage and the building isn't tilted. And sheesh, I was there in person and it was such a cool experience. That was like Disneyland to me. As structural engineers, yeah, we'll design buildings, we'll put it in our software analysis models, our hand calculations, and that's how we design for earthquakes, but it's, very rare that you actually get to see a real earthquake hit an actual full-scale building. It just doesn't happen. And seeing it and knowing that the engineering that we've designed actually works for a real-life earthquake, it's so cool. That's one of the reasons why I love being an engineer. So will we be seeing more mass timber and these rocking wall systems in the future? I think so, but there's still challenges ahead that the industry has to overcome. These rocking walls are still a new concept to engineers and contractors of the builders, so they're still figuring out the best way to design and construct these. There's a lot of complicated connections and nuts and bolts that have to go into everything. Another thing the industry has to overcome is the public's perception of wood in a fire. Even though fire testing has shown that mass timber performs pretty well in a fire and even meets the building code's requirement for fire resistance ratings, the general public probably doesn't know that. And even with all that testing, will that be enough to convince the public otherwise. So let me know what you think in the comments. Would you be comfortable in a wood skyscraper? And since you made it this far into the video, you might as well consider subscribing. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, which is pretty crazy, but subscribe only if you want to. If you hate engineering stuff, yeah, don't subscribe, but why are you even watching the video then? Either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.